2.0 in social media. I, I presented social media at this point in the presentation because I want you to focus on all those other things first. Those other things are extremely important. Your social media marketing campaign will not be successful unless you have great content. You have a fantastic website that is featuring that content that's optimized for lead generation, and you have a program in place to get more people to that site that are searching on Google. Once you have those things in place, then we can really effectively leverage social media and Web 2.0. When I talk about Web 2.0, I just want to make sure you understand what the difference is between Web 1.0, how it relates to social media. Web 1.0 was the old way of publishing information on the web. You have a website, you have product information, you publish it to your website, your customer comes to the site and reads that information. Web 2.0 provides for more two-way interaction with your audience. They not only come to your site to view and read that content, but they can contribute as well. For example, with a blog, you put a blog post out there, you're encouraging people to comment on that blog, you're going to comment back and you have that two-way dialogue. So Web 2.0 provides for interactive two-way communication leveraging social media. Social media is just a fancy term for content, social content that we're sharing out on the, on the web on social networking sites. So one of the first things I want you to do from a social media marketing standpoint, from a Web 2.0 standpoint, is start producing a blog. How many people in here have a blog on their site? OK, a handful of you. I want the rest of you, if you're interested in generating more leads, to start producing a blog. Because according to research, companies that have an active blog generate 67% more leads than companies that don't. And who does not want 67% more leads? What a blog is, is an online journal where you will publish ideas, thoughts, trends in your industry, best practices, whatever information you want to present. Bloggers allow people to communicate back with them through commenting so that you can have a two-way communication process. There's two ways that you can go about creating a blog very easily. You can use hosted services like blogger.com to create a blog very quickly and cost-effectively. Or you can integrate your blog into your website using services like WordPress. WordPress is open source blogging software that you can download. I recommend, if you have to pick one of these two, you think about using WordPress. And the reason is this. It's for search engine marketing purposes. If you create a blog on blogger.com and you create all this great keyword-rich content, you know who's going to get credit for that content from Google's perspective? Blogger.com. What we want to do is have your .com address get credit, and WordPress allows you to very easily integrate that blog under your .com address. Was there a hand that went up? Anyone? Ever? Sorry, go ahead. I know. I know. This is a fantastic blog. <laughs> any, any questions about blogs? OK. Online videos. Uh, how many people in here are producing online videos? OK, good. A lot more hands. We need online videos. Online videos are fantastic uh, social media content uh, because they serve you in a number of different ways. One, it's great content for your website. If a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth a million. You can communicate so much more information in a nice short five to ten minute online video. They don't have to be professionally produced. A simple digital camera will allow you to get the job done. The key is you have a good idea, a good best practice that you want to film. What you want to do is set up a destination on YouTube where you can publish those videos and then integrate them into your site. You can use videos to demonstrate a best practice. You can use videos to take people behind the scenes. You can use them for a number of different purposes. So if you're not using them now, think about ways that you can start using them. And then next, presentations and webinars are fantastic content that you can produce, fantastic social media content. Again, these are web-based presentations that you can create using simple PowerPoint and software like Camtasia to create uh, power, I'm sorry, presentations or webinars that can run on their own on your website. They also can be live presentations that you give using services like GoToWebinar. Okay. Yes. Uh, what type of content for blogs do I see that works well, and what type of content do I see that's a failure? Um, most of the blogs that are, are a failure, it's, it's because of one of two things. 
One is it's a ghost town. There's a blog that's there, and there's a new post maybe once every three months. Blogs are designed to be updated frequently, ideally weekly, if not more often. Uh, there's some companies update their blog multiple times per day. So having an active blog is extremely, extremely important. The second thing is you want to make sure that you're focusing on information that your customers will find valuable. You can't just be selling. Blogs that just focus on selling, selling, selling are not successful. You know, some examples of types of things you can blog about. Let's say there's a useful, you know, an important article in a trade publication that you have a unique perspective on. Write a blog post about your unique perspective on this article and then link out to the article itself. Let's say that a customer asks you a question. You can respond to that customer's question on your blog. Let's say that you see a trend developing in the industry. You can talk about that trend. You have a new white paper that people can download. Blog about that. Blog value, blog often, and you will be successful. Yep, the, the question is, is blogging worth it? You know, it's going to take time to keep a blog active. Are you going to get that return? Are your customers going to view it when they're visiting all these different sites? And what I have found is that a, a percentage of your customer base will not. A percentage of your customer base will. And it's a generational thing. Your older customers, they're not going to read your blog on a regular basis. But the millennials and Generation X, as they start to do business with you on a regular basis, they're going to be looking for more social content. And the blog is a, one of the quickest ways that you can start integrating social content into your site. So I think it's something you need to test and make sure that your blogging value, it, it doesn't work for everybody, but it works in a lot of cases if you have valuable information to share. Yeah, there's a number of ways that people can subscribe to receive your posts automatically so that you don't have to. And also, we're going to talk more about social networks in a few minutes, but a great strategy is, okay, I have my blog post out there. I'm going to share that on Twitter, on Facebook, on all my social destinations so that people can learn about it. Okay. All right, now, social networks. How do they fit into this equation? And the reason I spent so much time talking about content is because that's where you need to begin with social media marketing. You need to begin with the social media, the information you want to share, not with the social network. Too many times companies rush to the social network. Let's create this page on Facebook. But now what the hell are we going to do with it? What are we going to put out there? If you think about the content first, think about how it works on your website, think about how it feeds your search engine results, then it's going to be easy to create your Facebook page because you know exactly what you're going to be sharing. So I want to talk just briefly about what I mean when I talk about social media marketing, because there's a lot of different perceptions of it. I like to think of it as public relations. Good old-fashioned public relations. However, instead of pitching the media, we're pitching our peers. In the old way of public relations, we had to reach out to an author, to an editor, to a publisher, and say, look, I have this great information that your readers would love. Would you share it with your readers? And if they liked it, they'd put it in their publication, and that's how you'd share it. Social media marketing is exactly the same thing, but instead of pitching the media, we're pitching our peers. We're pitching our followers, our connections, trying to get them to take advantage of our information, to find it valuable, so that they'll share it with their network of friends and followers and connections, and so on, and so on, and so on. So if you think of social media marketing just as public relations, Make sure that you are providing valuable information that your network would want to share. That's really the best way to get the maximum reach with social media marketing. It becomes viral at that point. So think of it as public relations. Send out valuable content and you will get those results. So let's talk a bit about the social networking landscape. There's two different types of sites when we're talking about social networking. There are relationship sites and there are content sharing sites. The primary relationship sites, LinkedIn for connections, Facebook for friends, Twitter for followers, and Google Plus for circles. Then there are content sharing sites that focus not as much on who that person is, but what type of information is everybody interested in. YouTube for videos, SlideShare for presentations, Pinterest for photos and images, and Scribd for documents. There are many different types of content sharing sites. So the strategies are a little bit different when you're trying to focus on these different sites. The primary one that I want you to focus on, I know it's not the most popular one that's out there, but the primary one that I want you to focus your time on is LinkedIn. 
And the reason is LinkedIn will generate many more leads for you than Facebook and Twitter. It's the place where people go to conduct business. How many people in here have a LinkedIn profile? Okay, great, great. Those of you that do not, go back and set up a LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is the business-focused social networking site. 175 million members, not nearly as large as Facebook. However, it's a very, very focused group. It's a place where you can go and set up a profile for yourself, which is in many ways like an interactive resume on steroids. It allows you to put all your information about your experience, your expertise, but you also can hook in all of your social media content. You can hook in your blog into your LinkedIn profile. You can hook in videos and presentations into your LinkedIn profile so that you can create a fantastic, vibrant profile for yourself. LinkedIn recently made a change to allow you to create a very vibrant company page. Very similar to the type of page you can create on Facebook for your company, you can create on LinkedIn as well. And it allows you to share your social media content on there from a company perspective. There's a number of different ways that companies are using LinkedIn very effectively. Uh, first, participating in LinkedIn groups, like I mentioned earlier. LinkedIn has a group section where any possible topic, people are getting together and sharing ideas and information. Perform a search on your product offering, perform a search on the audience group that you're trying to get in front of, you will find dozens and dozens of LinkedIn groups related to that topic. Join those groups, start sharing your valuable social media content, link people back to your website for more. It's a very, very valuable tool for attracting people leveraging this social networking site. LinkedIn also has a section called Answers that basically allows you, people to submit a question and then others can respond to that question with an answer. It's a great way of showcasing your expertise and again referencing your site for more. Also, salespeople find that LinkedIn has eliminated the cold call. No longer do you have to pick up the phone and dial for dollars hoping that people will answer. What you can do is start performing warm calls with LinkedIn. If there's a company you want to do business with, you can perform research on LinkedIn and figure out who are the right people from that company that I should be talking to based on title, based on a number of different values. And then you can look at that person's LinkedIn connections and see, do we have any connections in common? If you do, you can reach out to one of your in common connections and say, hey, Joe, would you mind introducing me to Frank? I have some information I think he would like. It's a great way of building those connections without having to worry about pestering people. Next, Facebook. Facebook is the social, yeah, go ahead. Yep, the, uh, the question is, uh, and you probably are starting to get these yourselves, you're getting LinkedIn invitations from people you don't know, companies you don't know, countries that are, that are uh, not your own. And what should you do with these? If, if people join your LinkedIn connection and they become a connection, if you have it set it up this way, they can see your connections unless you hide them. Uh, what should you be doing? What I try to do is I only try to connect with people that I've had some kind of interaction with. I either met you at a conference like this, or I spoke to you at some other event, you picked up the phone and called me, or we had some type of valuable discussion in a LinkedIn group or in some other social networking site. Those are people that I have as my active connections. If I don't know who they are, I don't accept their invitations because I don't know what their intent is. You know? sure. Yeah, the, the question is, if, if you're not comfortable with your suppliers seeing your customer list in your connections, either hide your customer list or don't connect with them. You have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, you know, I, in an ideal world, we're connecting with people that we're looking to do business with, we're looking to share knowledge on social networking sites. That's how we're getting real value. If you're not willing to do that or you don't want to do that because you're concerned about your customer list getting poached, then you probably should either not participate or you should hide your connections. But what I'm finding is that um, more and more companies and more and more individuals are being more open uh, with LinkedIn and they're not seeing the bad effects that they would think as long as they're careful about who they connect with. Okay, okay Facebook. Uh, this is the largest social network out there. They hit a billion members. And companies are trying to figure out how to integrate Facebook into their marketing mix. Facebook gets the most attention because it's the most popular. A lot of people have Facebook accounts already for personal purposes, and they're trying to figure out how they can integrate it into their business marketing mix. And what companies are doing is basically setting up a destination on Facebook, setting up a page for themselves. 
And what I want you to do, if you're going to be doing this, make sure you have a great website and great content first. Because I think your Facebook page should look like a blog. Basically, posting valuable content that people can find on your site on a regular basis, a great compelling headline, a photo, a brief description that's keyword rich, and then a link back to your site where people can read that article in detail, read that blog post in detail. The strategy is, on one side, we have a great website that we're trying to attract people to. On the other side, we have Facebook, which already has a billion people there. Let's bring our content to them. So that's sort of the two-prong approach. Bring your content to Facebook. Try to attract those people back to your site so that they can become a lead. That's where a lot of companies are missing the boat. They're not connecting their website in with their Facebook page because they love their Facebook page, but they're embarrassed of their website. That's why I wanted you to focus on your website first. Yeah. Yeah, the question is, if you have a company page, uh, as well as salespeople have their own individual pages from, the, or, I'm sorry, uh, Facebook accounts for themselves, and you're all sharing that information, is it too much? Uh, it kind of depends. Facebook, I, I'm, I'm back and forth on Facebook as a business tool. I think a, a Facebook company page works very well. Salespeople using their individual Facebook accounts to connect with customers, that makes me a little concerned at times because customers are going to see all their Facebook nonsense that they're doing with their family and friends. Is that bad? Maybe it's not bad, but it's not something that I necessarily want to do in a lot of cases. That's why I encourage salespeople, you want to do that type of sharing, you want to do that type of connecting, do it with a LinkedIn profile because it's more of a business place to do it. Is it overwhelming for customers if they're seeing it on salespeople pages as well as um, on your business page? It may or may not. If it's redundant, it might be overwhelming. If it's a salesperson's unique take on an article that you posted on your a Facebook business page, then maybe it would add value. It depends on, on what they're posting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll try and summarize the question. Some, some individuals are setting up kind of business purposes, marketing purposes on their individual Facebook accounts. And Facebook is trying to discourage that. That's why they let you set up Facebook pages. But there are some limitations on what you can do on Facebook pages versus on your individual profile. I, I know that Facebook is uh, rapidly evolving. The, the business page, adding more capabilities. Uh, the other problem that you mentioned is that if, you, if you're stuck and you're not sure how to do something, there's no one there to help you. That's the case. Facebook is not there to help you in a lot of cases. Um, what, what I would recommend is that you find somebody that just is willing to spend the time and learn the system, already does it. They're an agency that does it for somebody else. Yeah, I'm going to say there are a lot of online resources. You want to be on top of social media marketing and online marketing. Uh, Mashable.com is a fantastic site. And also, if you go on YouTube and you perform searches, how do I do this on Facebook? How do I do that on Facebook? There are a lot of tutorials that people have created. So there's a lot of content that's out there. Mashable, it's, it's, think of it, it's a news site that aggregates useful information uh, from an online marketing perspective. OK, Twitter is a fast-paced social network for shouting. Uh, this is a place where people will go and just start broadcasting information to people that want to follow it. You can follow anyone on Twitter. Anyone can follow you. The difference between this network and the others is there's no permission base. You don't have to accept somebody's follow or whatever. Anybody can follow anybody. So companies are using Twitter as a broadcasting tool letting people know if their blog posts have been updated, letting people know of targeted promotions and specials. So Twitter is a lot more fast-paced than the others. Um, actually, I, I find that Twitter is difficult to get your message out in front of people because depending on how many followers they have, they're getting hit every second with a new tweet, doop, doop, doop. It's hard to get your message there. So I found that LinkedIn is, has been more of an effective tool in terms of getting information out. Twitter's a good tool, but you just need to understand its advantages and limitations. Yeah, sure. The, the visual capabilities of Twitter are still somewhat, somewhat limited. Uh, you can, with your tweets, post pictures. You can, with your tweets, uh, post links out to videos. And now they're starting to embed them a little bit more. Uh, it's not as visual as some other uh, social networks that we're going to talk about. Uh, Google Plus, this is the latest uh, entry into the relationship-based social networks. You may be thinking, why do we need another one? Well, Google can't sit this one out. Google needs to get in on the action. And they did actually add something unique to the social networking mix. I mean, it does everything that the other ones do. 
It allows you to have video chats with people. You know, there's a number of capabilities. But what I found most interesting about Google Plus is they allow me to organize my connections. So I don't have to send the same information to everybody. My problem with, link, with LinkedIn and Facebook, if I'm going to share something, I'm sharing it with everybody, no matter who they are or whether or not they're interested. Google Plus has added an element called circles. So you can create separate groups of your connections, a group for your customers, a circle for employees, a circle for family members, a circle for your board of directors, a circle for your bowling team. And then when you're sharing information on Google Plus, you can send it only to the circles that would find it interesting and relevant. So this is an innovative way of approaching it. The other services, the other social networking sites like Facebook and LinkedIn are trying to figure out how can we retrofit this into our service. So I don't know if Google Plus is going to be the dominant social network, but I do know that they are changing the game in terms of how people are sharing information, and they're doing it in a valuable way. Yep, yeah, the question is, can Google Plus be linked into your website the way that uh, Twitter and Facebook can? Not as sophisticated as, as the other. It, Google Plus is getting there. I mean, even on Google Plus right now, you can create a page for your company, but it cannot be a branded page that includes your company's name. It's a long string of characters. So they're, they're trying to quickly evolve the service. They, they have a lot of catch up to do, but I think that um, you know, this, is, this concept is one that I'm happy that they added into the mix. Anything, any of the Google services, if you have ever logged into Google, you have a Google Plus account. So uh, they're integrating it with all their different online services. And it's, it's kind of a blurred mix, but they're getting all this data from all these different directions. It'll be interesting to see how this evolves. OK, let's switch gears and talk about content networks. Uh, YouTube is probably the best content network for videos. Uh, this is actually a site that is visited very, very often for people that are looking to learn anything. I bet you could go to YouTube and get the equivalent of a master's degree just watching videos on all these different subjects. People put so much information out there. I told you about why you should create videos before. You should create a channel on YouTube for your company. Create a branded channel, start uploading all your videos, optimize the titles, optimize the descriptions for your most important keyword phrases, and start embedding your videos into your website. Google will give you a little block of, I'm sorry, Yahoo, YouTube will give you a little block of code that you can embed into your site so that the videos can run within your site. YouTube videos are also bubbling up in the search results, so you'll see them on the first page. So there's a number of reasons to take advantage of it. We talked about visual social networks before. Uh, this is probably the most visual social network. Uh, this is the newest entrant, Pinterest, and it's very popular. It's growing. A lot of people like working with it. Think of it as a virtual scrapbook. People are going online to different sites. They're finding photos they like. They're finding images they like. And they're pinning them into their little virtual scrapbook. So companies are creating Pinterest accounts so that they could showcase products and ideas and other information. So how many people have a Pinterest account? I know you guys do. OK, good, good. I see more hands for Pinterest. So it's something I would experiment with because your industry is a very visual industry. You have a lot of great information to share uh, in a visual way. Pinterest is perfect for that. Yeah, right now, Pinterest doesn't allow that level of, of, uh, of focus. You know, Pinterest isn't as much thinking of themselves as a business marketing destination. You can target brides, you know, just include descriptions that they would like. A lot of brides are using Pinterest to basically create little scrapbooks of, I like this floral arrangement, I like this dress. You know, so there are ways you can target specific demographic groups, but just not geographic. Okay? Uh, there are other content sharing networks that are out there. Uh, SlideShare for presentations, Flickr for images, Scrib for documents. So you know, think about ways. What we're trying to do is get our content on as many sites as possible, is what we're trying to do. 